a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Fifth Seal, episode 18. I'm your host, Norm the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. The Evangelical Norm. The Fifth Seal is a podcast to bring awareness and prayer to our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Every year I count down the top 50 countries on Open Doors USA's World Watch list. So from January to October, I count down twice a month from 50 to 31 And then throughout the month of November, which about 10 years ago I dubbed to be Persecuted Church Awareness Month, I count down from 30 to number one, those countries on Open Doors USA's World Watch list. It is a countdown, which is why the episode numbers go backwards. Yesterday was episode 19, today is episode 18, tomorrow is 17, on till the end of the month when we reach country number one on that World Watch list, which is the worst country in the world for Christians to live based upon the persecution that they endure there because of their faith in Jesus Christ. That's a little teaser to keep you uh, on watching and and joining us until we get to number one. Not going to tell you who it is, although if you've watched in the past, you know who it is. It's the same country every single year. So all that being said, a little bit of background on the podcast. Today is Saturday, November 13th, and this is our update on the persecuted church around the world. This from uh, ChristianPost.com. <clears throat> Excuse me. Journalists arrested and charged after reporting on attacks against Christians in Nigeria. A Nigerian journalist faces prolonged detention allegedly for his reporting about attacks against predominantly Christian communities in Nigeria and the government's response. Luca Biniyat, a Nigerian Roman Catholic journalist and father who writes for the anti communist, anti community, com, anti communist, yeah, I'll learn how to read soon, Epoch Times, was arrested last week. On Tuesday, Biniyat was arraigned at the Barnawa Magistrates Court in Kaduna State. He was charged with cyberstalking, a charge that critics say is often used in the African country to silence the media. On November 4th, Biniyat informed Epoch Times Africa Desk, at Africa Desk editor Doug Burton that he was arrested and, char- and urged the editor to, quote, contact all relevant persons, unquote. Burton elaborated on the circumstances leading up to Biniyat's arrest and the dangers he faces in an interview with the Christian Post. Burton attributed Biniyat's arrest to an October 29th article he wrote titled, quote, In Nigeria, police decry massacres as, quote, wicked, but make no arrests, unquote. The article is part of the Epoch Times Times coverage of the deadly persecution of Christians Christian farming communities in the African country that human rights advocates say have escalated to, quote, near genocidal levels, unquote, in recent years as thousands have been killed. In the article, Biniyat pushed back on Kaduna's Commissioner of Internal Security and Home Affairs Samuel Arawan's characterization of an attack on Christian farmers in the state as a, quote, unquote, clash. The Nigerian government has long refuted claims by human rights activists that a religious genocide is taking place in Nigeria's Middle Belt states, where radicals from the Fulani herding community have been accused of invading countless Christian farming communities. The government has long attributed attacks and reprisals as being part of a decades-old farmer-herder clashes. In his, in his article, Biniya included a quote from a Nigerian senator who accused the Kaduna government of, quote, using Samuel Arawan, a Christian, to cause confusion to cover up the genocide going on in Christian southern Kaduna by describing the measure as a clash as opposed to a targeted act of violence against Christians, unquote. Quote, what he, Biniyat, did there was showed that the commissioner was projecting a false narrative, unquote, Burton explained. Quote, for this reason, I think the authorities 
though they knew they would get pushback for prosecu- prosecuting a dissident journalist, they decided they had to do it because they want to shut down his voice, unquote. Burton told CP that the journalist was accused of cyberstalking Arawan. Cyberstalking is a federal offense. Quote, the magistrate ruled that he does not have the authority to try the charge of cyberstalking because it's a federal charge. It's a federal statute. So the case will have to be transferred to a federal court. And so, therefore, in the meantime, he can't get bailed because the magistrate doesn't have the authority to give him bail since he doesn't have authority over this crime, unquote. Sources Burton spoke to believe that the persecution prosecution is using a, quote, legal technicality to keep Luca in jail, unquote. Quote, by having his charges pre- presented first in a lower court, court, a district court where he was charged, they expected him to be charged with defamation and injurious falsehood, unquote. Burton said, quote, these are statutes in the criminal code of Nigeria and can be tried at the lower court level. But the charge of cyber stalking is a federal charge that has to be issued by a higher court, unquote, he continued. Quote, and by doing so, And by doing that, and so by doing that, deliberately, the prosecution knew that bail couldn't be given, and that is the whole idea, unquote. On Monday morning, Biniat texted that he felt like his life was in danger, Burton said. Additionally, Biniat has said he has been held for five days in a very cramped and dingy cell that he described as uncomfortable. Biniat further alleged that he hadn't gotten much sleep. Quote, he texted another person, another journalist I know named John Shicklum, and Shicklum said he feared for his life, unquote, Burton detailed. Based on conversations with other people who have faced detention for cyberstalking in Nigeria, Burton estimates that Benny Yacht could spend about five months in prison. Burton spe- specifically cited the case of Stephen Kifos, who wrote something on Facebook that embarrassed a government official. The government official claimed he was being cyberstalked and feared he could be attacked because of what Kifas wrote. Burton indicated that prolonged detention could have an impact on Biniyat's physical health. So, again, we just see this is a Christian, I mean, obviously a, a Christian reporter, journalist, who is being arrested because he's pushing back against the government narrative. So the government steps in. So here again, we see that in Nigeria, not only are they dealing with the Fulani militants, um, different uh, Al-Shabaab slash Boko Haram style groups, um, they're also dealing with uh, persecution from the government as well, who just like in India, Pakistan, any of these other places with like blasphemy laws or laws that make proselytization, preaching the gospel illegal. Here they, they use these different laws to charge people basically to silence them. So let's be praying for our, our, our brother, um, Biniyat there in Nigeria. Pray that, that he is, um, He is cleared of these charges and will be released soon. And that brings us to our World Watch List country for today, number 18, which is Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. A few facts about Myanmar. The region is Asia. Persecution type is religious nationalism. The main religion is Buddhism. The persecution level is very high. Population of Myanmar is 54,808,000, of which about 4,362,000 are Christians. So this is slightly under 10%. Government is a parliamentary republic, and the leader is President Win Myint. So what does persecution look like in Myanmar? Myanmar, what is life like for Christians? Religious nationalism is especially strong in Myanmar and drives much of the persecution of Christians. There is an increasing emphasis on Buddhism to the exclusion of all other religions. Converts to the Christian faith often face persecution from their families and communities for leaving or quote-unquote betraying the system of belief they grew up in. Communities who aim to stay quote-unquote Buddhist only make life for Christian families impossible by not allowing them to use community resources such as water. Well-established churches have been attacked and in some instances, Buddhist monks have invaded church compounds and built Buddhist shrines inside. 
Non-traditional church groups experience opposition too, especially those located in rural areas and or are known for evangelistic activity. The government tries to act against extremist Buddhist monks, but this, this sends mixed signals since it has come, become clear that extremist monks enjoy the support of the army. Myanmar is the scene of the longest civil war in the world, which began in 1948. Although much media attention has been given to the plight of the Rohingya Muslims, the ongoing war against insurgent groups, which affects, among others, the states of Kachin, Karen, and Shan, all of which have a strong Christian minority, have gone largely unnoticed. The predominantly Christian Chin state was also affected by fighting. Christians are vulnerable to persecution by insurgent groups and the army, and more than 100,000 Christians in the north live in internal displacement camps, where they are deprived of access to food and health care. The COVID-19 pandemic has also added challenges, since many Christians are deliberately overlooked in the distribution of government aid. What has changed in Myanmar? Myanmar has jumped one place from last year, reflecting the ongoing severe persecution faced, facing many Christians. Converts continue to encounter tremendous hostility from family and the local community, while believers remain caught up in the fighting plaguing the states of Kachin, Shan, and Karen, all of which have significant Christian population, as well as the predominantly Christian Chin state. Who's most vulnerable to persecution? Christians in Kachin state in the north of the country are especially exposed to persecution. Due to the ongoing fighting, more than 100,000 people, mostly Christian, are living in internally displaced persons uh, camps, most of them for years, and humanitarian access to them is blocked. Fighting continues as well in neighboring Shan State, which has a large minority of Christians, especially in the north. Chin State, which is predominantly Christian, has also been the site of a great deal of conflict. Prayer points for Myanmar. Pray for those who have left Buddhism to follow Jesus, that God will strengthen, encourage, and protect them. Ask that all believers in Myanmar will receive and enjoy fruitful fellowship with other Christians. Pray that the Lord will intervene and bring a peaceful resolution to the ongoing civil war. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time we have to come together to lift up our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in you. Lord, we, we thank you that you've provided for us a uh, social media platform where we can come together across vast distances and even across the span of time. As most people will be listening to this, watching this video later, downloading the podcast, taking it with them, but yet still joining their voices with ours as we lift up our brothers and sisters around the world. Lord, we pray for Luca Biniat, this, uh, this uh, journalist who's been arrested because of his reporting on the issues within the Christian community and the attacks by Fulani militants and other situations that are going on there, Lord. We pray that he would be cleared of the charges of cyber stalking, that he would be able to return home to his family, and that he would be able to continue to write the articles and report the situations that are happening there without censorship, without uh, being trying to, having the government try to silence him, Lord, and that you would use his story and his plight to draw others to repentance and faith in you, even guards in the jail or people who have read his articles, Lord, that, that they would be um, faithful to, to repent, that you would draw them to repent um, and come to faith in you, Lord, where you will be faithful to forgive them of their sins. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Myanmar, those who have converted from Buddhism to Christianity, Lord, those who have repented and put their faith in you. We pray that you would protect them from their community and their families, that you would continue to keep their faith strong, that you would provide for them uh, mentors and disciples who can come alongside and teach them and help them to grow and mature in their faith, Lord, and that you would use them to share your gospel with others around them as well. We pray that you would bless all the Christians there, that they would have a uh, the ability to fellowship together, to join together, to, to read your word, to learn from your word, Lord, as you called your church to do so, that they would be able to gather as a church and not be uh, persecuted in doing so. And Lord, we pray that you would, in, you would intervene with the government, Lord, and bring an end to this longtime civil war there, um, that peace would reign, that your gospel would be preached, and that many 
would come to know your salvation, your gospel, repent and put their faith in you, Lord. Um, and we again pray that you would use all these situations to draw those people to yourself and that you would be glorified in all these things because it is for your glory and in your name that we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Guys, thank you again for taking some time to come and, and pray uh, and hear about stories of our brothers and sisters who are persecuted because of their faith. If you know somebody who would like to join us who's willing to take 10 to 15 minutes a day, um, either to watch a video or listen to a podcast and join us as we pray for our brothers and sisters. You can invite them to come over to the Fifth Seal page on Facebook where they can join that group. They can go to the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube, like and subscribe and hit the notification, get all the con- uh, the content that is released there, or they can pick up audio podcasts wherever they get their audio podcasts from. Amazon, Google, Spotify, iTunes, any of those platforms carry this podcast. You just have to look up the fifth seal. You'll find it and they can take it with them. So invite them to do that. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for those who hit the like and share. That helps the algorithm send this out to more and more people who might want to see it. So we appreciate all that you do. And as always, Preach the gospel at all times. Use words because they're necessary. And until next time, until tomorrow, Soli Deo Gloria.